Hi everyone, this is Sean, and this is Mr. Silhouette. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to our channel. If you find this video helpful, please consider pressing the thumbs up button, subscribing to our channel, and sharing this video with anybody who's considering taking the two-day BSIS firearm permit course. If you find this video helpful, if you are a firearms instructor licensed under the BSIS, by all means, please share this video, share the content with your students. You can share this on day one, share this on day two if you like. However, keep in mind that Sean, meaning me, I don't work for the BSIS at all. There might be some errors or omissions in the video that might complicate things a little bit or maybe a lot. Make sure that you always consult with your BSIS firearms training manual when in doubt, whether you're a student or you are an instructor. So a little bit of background about myself. I'm currently a licensed BSIS firearms instructor. I rarely I rarely qualify private security candidates. My mission more is to show them the tactical side of, of training. Now, on a, on a normal basis, I normally train police officers, sworn law enforcement officers. I also train tactical units. So that's what I normally do. And that's my qualifications in a nutshell. So without further ado, let's talk about how we got here. In January of 2022, I made a video showcasing the BSIS firearm permit qualification standards. Since then, the qualification standards has changed. I noticed that I got a lot of views and a lot of comments in the first video I made. So I think it's time, it, it look, time's up. <laughs> time's up and fast forwarding it today, 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 we are talking about the brand new course of fire. It has all changed. It has all changed. So let's talk about the target. Wherever you go and get qualified, they have to follow the minimum target requirements. And most likely you are going to have an NRA B27 target. What you have before you, it is an NRA B27 target, but it's the miniature version. You normally would engage in the target with a rifle at 50 yards. So it's the shrunken down version. Wherever you go, they have to follow the standards, which I'm gonna talk about right now. It doesn't matter wherever you go. There are minimum requirements that BSIS demands. The minimum scoring area is 14 inch by 24. Just to give you an idea on how wide 14 inches is and how long 24 inches is, I drew it for you. I drew the line for you. So this is 14 inches from this part of the target to this part. That's 14 inches across. 24 inches, and this is one of your, I guess your typical IPSA target, is from the shoulder all the way down to here. This is 24 inches. Actually, the line should be right here. So 14 inches and 24 inches. I'm gonna challenge myself. Look, I don't have the bigger target, so I do have to challenge myself. So my, sco my scoring area, for all intents and purposes, is gonna be within, within the seven ring, okay? So once again, minimum, minimum target size, minimum area, where it's your, your impact zone is 14 inches wide from this line to this line, and then 24 would be up to here to here. So compare that to your human being. And I, I'm a shorter guy, I'm like five, six, sometimes I think I'm five, seven, and I'm about 155 pounds on a, on a better day. Okay, now let's talk about how big can this target get? The video I did in January of 2022, I used the biggest target possible, but I'll just outline it right now. So it's 24 inches wide, okay? So if I were to flip this piece of cardboard horizontally, you would have a 24 inch target. And the lowest 
um, well, the farthest that it goes down is 45 inches. More or less, uh, 45 inches is probably from right here all the way down to about right here, right here, somewhere around here. So compare that to your human being. So that's your minimum target size. Now, the minimum uh, number of rings, it's gonna be a minimum of five rings. You can use a seven ring target. And also why I'm mentioning this is just in case you wanna practice, you can go on Amazon and find the proper target that has dimensions, that has the proper dimensions that we're, we're speaking about. But it has to have a minimum of five rings. We have seven right here. And just type in on the search engines, wherever you go, the B27 target. If there's any important information or there's any products that I think that is worth looking at, just check out the description box below. Also, if you're running range and you, you wanna see for yourself what the dimensions are and more information about the target, because this is like 80% of the information I'm mentioning right now, just because we wanna save time. Go to the description box and I will cite the CCR, the California Code of Regulations, just so that you could do your own research. So now I'm gonna walk you through the course, just a little bit here. So you will see five cones. One, two, three, four, and five. Each cone signifies different yardage. Here's your target. So the farthest that you're gonna to have to qualify, let me walk over here, is going to be at 15 yards or about 45 feet. So the first cone is 45, I'm sorry, it's 45 feet, 15 yards. I, I know that it looks like it's far away. However, you normally want to zoom in about 2x, maybe even 3x to get a better perspective. I think it may be about 3x and it's actually a lot closer than you, than you think. A lot of streets in California are somewhere between 30 feet and 45 feet wide. So just imagine more or less curb to curb. So that's 45 yards. Okay, moving in. This, I'm sorry, that's 15 yards. Okay, this is 10 yards. Okay, 10 yards, there's a target. Seven yards, there's a target. Five yards, there's a target. And then this is three yards target something else that you also have to keep in mind is that your range setup might look something totally different than what we have you might be qualifying at an indoor range maybe inside of like a 50 foot trailer maybe outside just like this regardless the environment might look a lot different i also want you to keep in mind that in this video I will probably scan for additional threats. So what that would look like is I would draw from the holster. Okay, after I'm done firing, wherever my eyes go, so should my barrel, so that I have a barrel solution for what my eyes see. So I'll be scanning, You'll, you might see me scanning like this. Okay, bring it in just like this. Notice wherever my barrel goes, so should my head. In a realistic environment, after you are done with the shooting, after the suspect is down, you might actually step offline and 360 degrees, maybe lower your pistol, because remember, you're gonna have to have justification for pointing your gun, orienting your muzzle at other human beings like witnesses. You need justification for that. So most likely, you'll probably be in the low ready position Scanning for more threats. Up, down, around. Now the problem with that is, at most ranges, if you're doing that here, you're facing up range. That will get you kicked out of the range. Almost for sure, if, if you pull one of those. Indoor range, the same thing. Imagine there's people behind you, and then you're scanning like that. So for all intents and purposes, in this video, if you see me scanning, it'll be just like this. I'll bring it in just like this. And I probably won't go too much that way. 
uprange. Reason for that is there is a road. <laughs> we do have a road over there. So I don't want to be flagging anybody. We always have to do this safe. Okay, so this is going to be five rounds in 30 seconds. Actually, I like to refer to this as five hits. Five hits in 30 seconds. I'm probably not going to get right in the X, but it'll be on target. Okay, shooters, go ahead and lock and load. Make ready. Make sure that you have your eyes on and your ears. On the buzzer, five rounds in 30 seconds. Shooters ready? Stand by. Shooters, go ahead and holster. Okay, so that was 30 seconds. I did this in eight seconds, 8.54. I did kind of rush it a little bit just because I'm a little bit enthusiastic, but notice that you have a lot of time. 30 seconds is a lot of time. Make sure that each hit counts. So now we're moving up to the 10 yard line. You will have 20 seconds to make 10 hits speed reload, and then another 10 hits. Shooters, go ahead and lock and load. On the buzzer, once again, 10 yards. You'll have 30 seconds, 10 hits, you'll conduct an emergency speed reload and then make 10 more hits. On the buzzer. So that was 26 seconds. The reason why I'm mentioning I did this in 26 seconds and you have 30 seconds is just so that you can hear the cadence. You can hear the rate of fire. I'm not totally rushing the shots. I had about four seconds yet to spare. Okay, so let's move on. So some ranges, some fire instructors will give you a command to pick up your magazines, to pick up whatever items are on the ground. Some won't, make sure that you ask. So at this point in time, if anybody has any magazines to pick off the ground, go ahead and do so now. So your group or your team would do so with a gun holster, obviously, and they would pick up the mags. Okay, so now we moved up to seven yards. What we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and load a 10 round magazine and with your strong hand only strong hand only you're going to fire and make five hits right in target right to target then you're going to transition to your weak hand but formally known as your support hand so you transition me personally i like to switch feet and then lean into it. If you want to cant, if you don't want to cant your gun, cant meaning tilt the gun, it's up to you. Whatever your instructor suggests. You will have 20 seconds. So it's going to look like this. Beep. One, two, three, four, five. Transition. One, two, three, four, five. Just like that. The reason why they perform this drill is 
or they have you perform the drill just in case one of your hands gets shot. Maybe your support hand gets hit, maybe your strong hand gets hit, or maybe you're holding the shield. Maybe you have a child that you're trying to leave the area with because it's an emergency and all of a sudden you have to address a threat. That, that's, that's, that's why. Okay, so this will be 20 seconds. No pressure at all. I, I just dropped two. I dropped two off my miniature target already. I've been, I keep trying to go too fast. All right. That helps. that one again trying to go too fast okay so we are at five yards you will have a generous a very generous 30 seconds to fire five rounds and then go down to a kneeling position and fire five more all you have to do is have one knee touch the ground whatever knee you want have it touch the ground and then you're good to go. So it will look like this. Beep, you got 30 seconds. That's a generous amount of time. One, two, three, four, five. Kneeling position. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and chamber round. This happens guys with the pros. Even the pros forget the chamber round. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time to record. I'm in the desert, usually around March, April. I have about 30 minutes to record and then all my cameras start heating up. So um, I'm gonna chamber around. If you forget on the range, just raise your hand just like this. I need a chamber round still and your instructor will give you a command to do so, okay? So I'll go ahead and chamber round. On the buzzer. Most likely, well, you'll hear the 30 seconds. We'll wait. That's a lot of time, guys. There you go, that's 30 seconds. That's plenty of time. So from this position, most likely your instructors will have you go to a standing position, just like this, and then go ahead and holster. It's generally not advised to holster on the kneeling position, just because there's a possibility of you flagging your femoral artery or your leg. That's why they usually have you standing up. Okay, shooters, we made our way all the way up to the three yard line. You will have eight seconds to make a total of five hits. Eight seconds, five hits. You do have, you do have some gem, generous amount of time, but it's not 30 seconds, it's only eight seconds. If you are running the red dot at this point in time, you probably want to start aiming around where the nine is at, or basically a little bit, maybe like an inch above 12 o'clock right in the X, X ring. So once again, we're at the three yard line. You will have a total of eight seconds to make five hits, okay? It is some generous amount of time, but it's not 30 seconds. Okay, on the buzzer. Whew. Lock and load. <laughs> so I'll raise my hand. I need to make ready. Okay, go ahead. All right, here we go. Okay, at this point in time, staff is going to have you make sure that your magazine is out of the well of weapon, just like this. Lock the slide to the rear, 
and they are, conduct, they are going to conduct a visual and physical inspection of the chamber. If the gun is clear, they'll have you holster. Some security agencies will have you holster just like this, or just like this, or they'll have you send the slide. Really an agency training agency specific choice. So now we're gonna go ahead and score the target. And notice, I, I, I'm not photoshopping anything. I'm not editing anything. I'm going to show you where exactly where my hits impacted. Let's take a look. Okay, let's go ahead and score. I don't know if you guys realize this. You probably haven't yet already, but um, the GoPro was located right next to the target and I didn't hit the GoPro, which is a good thing. Okay, so first, at, I think it was at the seven yard line where I was shooting five rounds strong hand and then five rounds support um so i did i did go over time it was like 20 seconds and like 20.34 seconds that shot afterwards does not count so i will lose five points okay so let's see one two three and then four it has to be within the ring here Okay, so that's four, plus the other shot I fired after the timer. So we're minusing 25. There's a total score of 250. And my score was 225. So I shot 90%. So this would be a pass. To pass, you need 80%, and you can only miss 10 times. That would put you in the 80% range. If you ever want to be an instructor anywhere, a lot of the times, the qualification standard, it's usually 80%. Um, but on the federal level, I've seen it's usually about 90%, and there's some post-qualification courses that require 90%. Mind you, I'm shooting on the miniature target. Okay, this is a lot smaller than is required. I mean, a lot smaller. Remember, all that's required is um, it's it's 14 by 24. So here's your 24 inch from neckline to bottom, and then your 14 inch would be over here. So as long as I'm all within here, okay, that's all the acceptable scoring area. It would the score would have actually been 245 out of, out of 250. Um, because I, I shot after the timer, okay? Um, headshots, right here, the headshots. The headshots don't count. It has to be within the scoring ring area. Every hit, okay, every hit inside the scoring ring area is five points. So this will conclude the course of fire. If you guys have any questions at all, any questions at all about the course of fire, please comment below. If this video helps you, take the BSIS firearm permit course, comment below if it helps you get a better understanding on what to expect during the BSIS course, specifically the second day, comment below. If you want some tips on how to shoot better, please, please ask, but also check out the description box. I'm constantly updating the information, constantly adding the information. I'll show you everything that I know and maybe it'll help you out. I can already tell you that I have a bad habit of shooting to the left, as you can see. Reason for that being is most of the time it's unequal um, grip pressure. So here is my strong hand. With your support hand, you want to cover all this area right here, but you want to you want to apply more pressure here. That's what I want to do: apply more pressure here. Now, some some might say, "Well, it's the trigger control. You're putting too much trigger." Well, if you have a different position and grip, that'll put your trigger finger a little bit away from the trigger and more flat, just like this. So that's what I need to improve on. Um, this is a semi-stress shoot and I'm trying to make time. Just something that I need to work with. So if, if you want more tips on how to press a trigger, equipment, how to hold the gun properly, check out the description box below and we're constantly adding information. All right, guys, take care and good luck on your permit course.